My name is Naomi Nian and the title of my work is Mongolia, the Art of Living. The idea behind my work came about through a desire to learn more about my Mongolian ancestry. My last name actually has Mongolian roots, um, but I, I have a Chinese background. Um, so I realised that I didn't really know much about this part of my family history and uh, wanted to know more about it and immerse myself in it. The first piece is the upper class or royalty. In the second piece is the lower class. I wanted to capture the Mongolians' connection with their land. And the third piece is middle class, and this one shows the interior of the gur, which is the tent structure that they lived in. For the materials, I decided to use wood. The Mongolians often painted on their furniture and doors, and I wanted to recreate that sort of effect for my artwork. The use of texture was uh, suggested by one of my teachers to create a relief effect and I think the, the texture really brings another dimension into the work. I was struggling with how to lay it out. I did a lot of drafts until um, I settled on the sort of symmetrical composition and that's what I liked. Advice that I would give visual arts students, find something that you really love or are passionate about or are connected to because then that would really come across in your work. I can just spend hours sitting there and painting and I think that's when you really know that you enjoy something if you don't want to stop. Uh, my name is Tim Sampson and my work is called um, Three Pack Comfort Sock. When I decided to use um, the socks as a material, the concept came really quickly you know, out of my own personal interest um, in the garment industry and um, how and why um, products are made in certain ways and the consumerism behind it. And for me, I guess that was a sort of big question, you know, why even high-end brands um, aren't, aren't paying their workers enough and are charging these you know, astronomical prices. So I guess for me, that sort of was the, the drive to create the work and yeah. There are the three ink prints and they're done with stencil work. Um, they're printed through an ink press, but they're actually printed with socks so that you see the textures of the socks through the work. Then there's the main piece, um, which is done um, using, again, four colours of socks and it's small pieces um, of cut up socks that are um, sort of cut up into just random shapes and then stitched together individually um, by hand and it's sort of done on a rug underlay um, just to hold its shape. And then there's the film, which is just a two minute film of an old sewing machine which I sourced, um, done in sort of a dark room and it's supposed to show the, the monotony, I guess, of the work. Um, and then there's also the, the apron piece. Yeah, it's tainted to, I guess, show the, the nature of um, the conditions. So there are a couple of artists who influenced me. Um, firstly, Hong Yi. Um, she worked out of Beijing for a short time and did um, another work um, in some ways similar to this one. She explored um, portraiture through objects as well, um, namely through using chopsticks, also clothing items. Um, and tea bags, and she um, created faces using those sort of found objects. Um, and another artist was Luke Cornish, who does a lot of stencil ink work as well, um, especially in portraiture. So I guess those two artists kind of influenced me into yeah creating this. I guess the advice I'd give future students would be um, to experiment and to use sort of all 
mediums that you can just to have a go at them. We're often told that you know our material practice should be informed by our conceptual practice, so an idea that we just have, um, but that, that idea often just doesn't just come. So I definitely do a lot of experimentation and I guess for me that's how my idea came about, um, through using different materials and then from there the concept grew. My name is Angeline Khoury and the title of my work is Harry Antoinette. I absolutely had no idea what to do, what medium I wanted to do. My teachers asked me, what do you take interest in? Everyone was like, oh, you know, she does a lot of people's hair, like why didn't she do something with that? Something to do with hair and he said, why don't you take some research into some hair designs and hair sculptures? It kind of evolved from the idea of um, body image, ways that people try to mask themselves and I came across the French queen uh, Marie Antoinette. I researched a lot of her attire and I found that she had a big interest in pretty much these extravagant hairdos so I pretty much took that idea of um, this obsession with hair and did it to the extreme of making a whole gown out of hair, obviously not real, synthetic hair. I also got a lot of help from my textiles teacher. She really assisted me on making the skirt. That was pretty much the underpiece ready for me to build on top with the hair. She is quite fair skinned, she has blonde hair, so I've taken um, quite an opposite approach and made the gown completely black, kind of like a gothic approach, so it kind of brings a bit of unease to the audience. There was a lot of obstacles during this. Um, lots of stories with the boat. Um, it actually fell down a whole flight of stairs and still managed to survive, so. When I create, I kind of go in a zone where I just like listen to music and I just go into like another world where I kind of like nothing else matters. Choose your body of work and your your idea with what you want to do, not what maybe others try and intend. Go with what your heart tells you to do and leaving enough time and also just getting as much advice as you can. Your peers, your parents and especially your teacher. To see it like on display again just, yeah, it's just, it brings me joy, it's happy. My name is Sydney Soames and the title of my work is Detritus, We Are But Temporary Madness on Repeat. Impermanence. It coats the bench like dust. It is the creak of the ravaged floor. I experimented with clay and inks but I found that video both, uh, most fit how I wanted to show the concepts of impermanence and loss. The trail of wind's fury has laid waste to me. To breathe, to breathe is all I see. I set up my camera with a tripod and I just started doing performance pieces and random actions that conveyed commonplace life but also a sense of illogicality because I thought that that fit impermanence and the strangeness of transiency. Absurdity clings to the fabric of my clothes, to my thoughts. Dreams, I was inspired by the wreckage of my home in the 2015 tornado in Cornell. So for me, my work was very personally cathartic. I hope the, the wider audience would find some relatability in it just through the universal concepts that I explored. My house has that look about it now. Mortuary for my little girl toys. Going into it, I was definitely not a tech genius or anything. I was self-taught on how to use the program. I used Adobe Premiere. I just watched lots of tutorials. I always had a passion for writing and I looked back upon my art diary. I realised that when I annotated a lot of my thoughts and even my experimentation, I had written them almost poetically and sometimes in rhyme. Watch as I whirl, 
twirl, whirl in its arms. Going about my painting, I use the still from my videos. First, I taped off the canvas and just areas that I thought would be good to leave raw. I sketched on the figure and the objects. I did just washes. I only used acrylic paint and sometimes varnish to give it a shine and sometimes PVA glue to thicken the paint. My advice to students undertaking their body of works would most certainly be trying to find the starting point. All I can say is just try and think of something in your life or society that makes you feel something strong because that will come through in your works. And if you can't think of anything conceptual, just start experimenting with different mediums and everything. So my name's Mia and the title of my work is Yayoi's Children. I had no idea what to do at first. I always knew what the concept was going to be and that was looking at my Japanese culture, but I, it took a really long time for my subject matter to develop. My art teacher helped me a lot. One day he gave me these pack of postcards that he was he collected in Japan. And then I was looking through them. I wasn't too sure what I thought about them, but then that triggered me because I remembered that I had also had some postcards and photographs and all that kind of stuff at home as well when I'd been to Japan on my trips. So basically that's where the subject matter and the idea really came from. They're pictures of Harajuku girls. Um, which is a modern society in Japan. They're very loud, dress crazily, and I really wanted to capture that within this work. So I started actually with the detailed drawings of the girls and boys, and then I did the background afterwards. I actually found the background a lot harder than the people. I used a lot of different devices to blend my background together. So like cotton, Q-tips, just anything soft I found around the house, tissues even. Um, and that helped a lot, which I think is good. I also looked up on Facebook what other people were doing. There's a lot of HSC art pages that you can join. Um, that was also really helpful um, to see what other people are doing is good as well. Well, I think obviously, like everyone else will say, you've just got to enjoy it and I'd just be going countless hours just watching TV whilst doing the work. So I think some, you've got to consider your art as downtime and not as work. I'm Venus Lacoste and my work is called Abstraction of Scale. Well, I've always really been interested in nature and patterns in nature, how they're formed, how they expand and, you know, how they're generated. I was really inspired by nature itself and also just pattern making. So I spent a lot of time finding a particular pattern. Um, this pattern that I ended up choosing just sort of filled all the requirements. It grew in a sort of nice and delicate way. I realised that, in fact, the pattern itself sort of, it moved its own way and no matter how much I wanted it to go, you know, this way or that way, the pattern itself had its own form. I ended up using inks on paper, um, with, which were really brilliant and shiny and in comparison to the black which is gesso, which is really matte. It's a matte black, so I needed a white paper um, that wouldn't sort of dissolve with the amount of water that I was putting on it with the inks. I was a bit nervous to make my work abstract. I wanted to show off my technical skill in uh, drawing, um, which I knew I could do, and I was really excited about doing that, but my mentor, my teacher, Sophie Lampert, said it looks much better, it's more powerful um, abstract, so just try and keep it abstract, which is and what I ended up doing. 
I wanted to increase ambiguity in the entire work. Ambiguity in scale and dimension. For example, some people might think, oh, it's a plant, or some people might think it's coral, or a net, or a cobweb. It's interesting to see such a small pattern evoke such different ideas from each individual person. So that was what I really wanted to show in the artwork itself. Hi, my name is Kelsey Poorbrook and this is my work entitled Ephemera. So my work came about after a lot of different ideas. I explored a lot of different artists and a lot of different works of art. Like I did a lot of sketches of portraits and a lot of... Uh, I was going to do a lot of different butterfly works and a lot of them didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. One day when I was at school, I looked at this book that was on my desk and it was by an artist named Robert Rauschenberg. And when I looked at his works, I, was, I fell in love with him and I just knew that I wanted to do something like his works. I knew that I wanted to do painting and explore his ideas of recycling old objects and reusing it in art to make it a different meaning, I guess, that objects have a different meaning. Um, I wanted to make the work about something personal, so I thought about that, the idea of using my pop as the, as the main person and influence behind my work. All the objects used in my work, they were all in his shed because he's a bit of a hoarder. When I started, I was talking to my teacher and, and she said, just put the paint to the canvas, just start, put different colours together, start mixing and matching the colours. And at the start, that was really hard because I was a bit confused about how I was going to do this because I was used, used to doing much detailed sketches. Like, and then doing something that's so completely the opposite of that was hard to get into and was hard to get going. I also had a hard time discovering where to put all the objects as well because what Rauschenberg uh, encompasses is the perfect place for an object. It feels really liberating and fun and it's just a completely different style of work. What I would tell to other students would be to keep experimenting, keep evolving, explore different artists and styles of art as well.